Hello, my fellow Trollops. I am here to you today with the start of the next uh, in the series of read-alongs of Am the Anthony Trollope uh, Palliser novels that is being hosted by Steve Donahue over at his channel. I will leave links down below. He's already actually done the first uh, the first uh, 20 chapters, which is what I'll be discussing today, of Anthony Trollope's uh, novel, 1867 novel, uh, of uh, the Pallisers. So, of course, as... Anthony Trollope will do, of course, he's going to start out with the Pallisers and just telling us all about what's been going on with them. It's like, no, no, that's not what Anthony does. Anthony immediately introduces us in the first five chapters to a whole bunch of new characters, starting off with Ferdinand Lopez, the um, mysterious foreigner. Well, he's got a foreign name, but he, and he's he's got a mysterious past and he's been raised in England, it seems, most of his life, if not all of his life, but he's dark. And nobody knows, like you know, exactly what he what he does. I think he talks about, like you know, he's in the foreign cap, foreign uh, foreign stock exchange market or something. Ah, uh, I'm not quite sure. Trollope is good with his money. I am not. Um, and indeed, in the first chapter, he, we see him with his imperious tone, uh, walking into what I believe is just sort of a money lender, uh, Sexty, uh, Sexty Parker, uh, and demanding that he write, sign a promissory note for him, uh, cause he wants to make a, he wants to get a, uh, he wants to get, he needs to, he needs some money on some ready cash because, of course, I always have cash, but, uh, I can't get my hands on it, so you're going to sign it for me now. And it's like, Cumbles is a kind of pretty threatening character. And uh, here, I'm going to put that down. He comes off as pretty thre threatening characters. This is how we're introduced to him. And it turns out we get introduced to him in the next chapter, one of his friends, uh, Everett Wharton, who is sort of one of these uh, useless uh, but uh, rich um, kind of um, you know, a respectable English gentleman who, who, you know, he's, he's tried his head at like about three different things. None of them worked out. So he's like, eh, I guess I'm not going to do anything with my life. I'm just going to be, be generally rich and, and, and handsome and British and in Britain and all ensconced in my, in my, uh, in, 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 in all the stuff that I can have. And it turns out that Lopez doesn't have like an uninterested reason for being his friend because he's interested in his, in Everett's uh, sister, Emily, Emily Wharton, uh, who he is, he has been gaining access to the house to kind of be able to kind of get close to and uh, win, hopefully, you know, win the infections of, because uh, indeed what we find at the end of this chapter is in very truth, he loved the girl and revered her believing her to be better and higher and nobler than other human beings, uh, as a man does when he is in love, and so believing has has those doubts as to his own success, which such reverence produces. So Lopez, who's kind of, introduces a kind of shady character, but he's also said, oh, he loves this Emily. Uh, and indeed, in the next in the next kind of chapters, we get introduced to kind of the main impediment, I guess, for him, uh, which is Abel Wharton. Uh, this uh, he's the the father, the patriarch of the family, and he's he's very much the um, he's a hardworking lawyer who's like you know really you know it's kind of the classic gray trollop uh, dude gray man who's just like he's really good at his job he works he works he works which i, I really think of i think of trollope when i think of that uh his maybe his only kind of odd little extra eccentricity is is that when he's actually at work he reads novels and poetry uh which you know it's uh when lopez catches him doing it later he says ah this is a weakness because obviously you know you have to be weak to read fiction or, or poetry that's obviously something for kind of a lower feebler mind uh, of, of a thing. So this is like, this, maybe this will be a, uh, something he can, he, he not notes down his book because Lopez is always calculating. This might be a thing. And, uh, Wharton, uh, you know, while he's, he, you know, all this stuff, when he gets braced with, Oh, I want to marry your daughter. He's like, no, no, you're not. And, and out loud, he says, well, it's like, cause you're not English. It's like, but I was raised in England. It's like, no, you have the name Lopez. You're Ferdinand Lopez. And it's like, okay, yeah, my father was Portuguese, but my mother is English and I was raised English. So this shouldn't be any problem. He's like, no, no, you're not English. And inwardly, uh, Wharton is going through is, is all the stuff of like, basically, you know, you're probably Jewish. That's immediately comes up. Uh, this is the uh, usual kind of the anti-Semitism of the time where uh, even even he says it's 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 kind of it's framed as like, well, we might be letting, you know, Jewish people and Roman Catholics like, you know, starting to kind of rise in government and, and not completely persecuting them. But they're not going to marry my daughter, which uh, 
you know, having watched a lot of dramas of uh, kind of earlier dramas, you can see that like, you know, with the guess who's coming to dinner sort of thing of like, oh, Sidney Poitier is not going to marry my daughter. He's black. It's that kind of a uh, bigoted racism, um, which uh, even in the book, I think it does say like, well, you know, he's a bit of a bigot, but, you know, it's, it's like, you know, he's a good guy, but he's a bit of a bigot. And and um, indeed, the, my whole this kind of disquiet throughout this novel uh, probably is like, OK, who is. Who, whose side are we supposed to take here? Because Lopez gets very much uh, um, gets very much portrayed as very kind of a shadowy figure. It's like a, he's a pushy. He's pushing in. He's invading. He's he's trying to he's trying to grab this this English daughter. You know, he's it's like he's he's being calculating. Even though we have that note at the beginning, which I had to had to remind myself of. It's like no, he actually loves he loves uh, uh, Emily Emily Wharton. Um, but it's it's it, but he's also portrayed as kind of calculating and uh indeed um we have a lot of the tropes of a Trollope novel of, of like Emily hasn't been guarded well uh uh her Miss Roby who is supposedly supposed to be a garden guardian has been bought off by Lopez yet more calculation and uh yes so we we we're, we're getting we're getting all that this is the this is what we start off with like we there's that additional disappointment it's like oh where's Palliser? where's Glencora the 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 uh the characters who this is the fifth the fifth book in the series these are those are the main characters in this series and indeed they do indeed get li uh, delivered in the next sort of uh chapter 6 to ch chapter 8 Palliser gets called into government. He'd, he'd been taking kind of very lowly positions because he was only interested in, in getting, you know, I think it's the coinage issue, get, getting the coinage issue through, much to the disgust of, of his wife, Lady Glencora. I'm sorry if I'm plunging you in the midst of this, but you've, 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 it, it's like the, getting into the Marvel Universe at Endgame, uh, I feel like, or the penultimate thing of Endgame. This is the Infinity War. Uh, now I've lost the other part of my audience of, of, um, you know, you 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 know all these characters now, and you're enjoying oh catching up with them. You you don't come into ch the book five of of a series and expect uh, not to. Well, it would be very hard, I think, to 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 follow along. Maybe you maybe it is good standalone, but it's the enjoyment of getting to see all these characters again. But yes, we. Palliser has been much to Glencore's annoyance has lowered himself into the coinage thing. No, but but the government falls. Nobody can put together a government, so it ends up being a coalition government, and Palliser gets called up as the prime minister. And, you know, Glencora is like, yes, I'm going to support you however I can, and is there some, I want to become the lady awaiting of the queen, and maybe the lady, she, you know, we can push the queen to the side, and I can kind of be the chief lady. He's like, you know, and, and, and Palliser kind of puts that plan down pretty quickly. Glencora is not suited to the court and all the stiffness of the court. She is a wild card, a bubbly, vivacious wild card that we've come to love. Uh, and indeed, as it goes along, this coalition government is going to have to work uh, as a social game, which Palliser is terrible at. Uh, I'm, I very much am kind of likening this to a, the uh, reality show Survivor, which if you don't know, is, you know, you put a whole bunch of contestants on the island and they compete to outwit, outmatch and outplay each other, uh, outlast each other and out outplay each other. And uh, Palliser is very much the hardworking guy around camp who like, I get the job done. I, I win all the challenges, so I should win the game where there's some very quiet people off to the side who are playing the social game and making all the connections because this is all about who's going to vote you in, vote you out, much like politics and Glencora excels at this and is holding the part and holds the parties and uh, is welding everything together and is very frustrated with Palliser who does not have this social game in his thing he comes to the parties and he only talks to his old buddy uh the uh, Bungay Duke of Bungay uh, but doesn't actually like talk to people and doesn't talk to the wives of the people he's got to give social capital to people but no Palliser can't do this um and we have a little intertwining of the thing because at one of the parties that Glencora uh, calls, she actually there's uh, there's an invitation to uh, Ferdinand Lopez. He's gained access into this world, social capital. He's also smart with social capital. Of I'm going to show uh, I'm going to show uh, Wharton that he 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 can't get me like I'm low. No, actually I I get invited to the best party. I'm getting invited to the prime minister. So you can't call me un English and low because I'm at the very top rung. And indeed, Lopez does seem to have this uh, scheme of well, it's actually really good when he's bigoted against me because of my nationality and 
you know, also unspoken, my religion, even though he's like, I go to church as much as you. I probably go to church more than you do. He gets pointed out to Wharton at some point, but that's not the point to, for Wharton. Wharton, it's, it's about, it's about, uh, you know, nationality. It's about r religion. It's about blood, blood in a, you know, that kind of racist way, blood. But the thing is, uh, Lopez seems to be taking advantage of that racism because they're so focused on nationality, nobody's asking him about his money. And everyone, uh, the continual refrain throughout the novel is, oh, well, we think he has money. We think he has money. Um, you know, he, we assume he does because he shows all the good, right signs. But we know from the beginning he's getting a loan and stuff like that. He makes a show of burning that same loan, loan notice before, but you wonder if he's just jumped off into some other pyramid thing because he's kind of propping himself up everybody's focusing over here it's like a it's a shell game it's a con man thing where you're all going to focus on me being kind of a, a nasty uh, uh what is what is wharton says a swarthy son of judah uh and other other epithet, epithets you're going to focus on this but you're not going to focus on well maybe i don't have any money you know maybe i'm not a gentleman that way thus if you're so focused on this and i can kind of dispel your fears with this i can slip in and get get them get the money as well as perhaps loving the woman. I think you, it, there's definitely practical characters in Troll who, like, you know, I love I love this woman, but I love this woman in a practical way of I can also get the money and I can become a gentleman through her. Um, so, yes, we're, 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 lo we're going back and forth. We're getting uh, all the old characters, as I, as I said, like the Marvel Universe. This is the Palliser Universe. So uh, we get to see uh, Phineas Finn pops in for things. He gets... He gets uh, Poor bastard. He 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 ends up becoming kind of responsible for the Irish file in the coalition government. Uh, you know, an, a very unenviable thing. Uh, one of his friends kind of declines it, which you have to think from a political standpoint probably is a good idea because, um, it's a super complicated file, which we, as we all know doesn't get any anywhere close to resolution for a long, long time or movement. Uh, and indeed, at this point, they're like, oh. You know, those Irish, they'd be better without the habeas, habeas corpus and they could some good martial law. Keep them, keep them tied down. And oh God, they don't need home rule. They, they couldn't rule themselves. Oh, oh, that would be terrible. Uh, and you know, and indeed probably a major part of this coalition government are the, uh, are the Protestants in Ireland whose or very much interest is to stay in power. And with that firm hold and with their, their, um, seats, in uh, in Parliament is probably pretty dicey for this coalition government, which to Palliser's uh, quite dismay, he realizes as somebody who like really wants to get stuff done uh, in government, uh, his dismay he finds out this this coalition government is probably more for like just holding the government country together, as 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 Glenn Cora says, you no, know, you know a part of a government isn't all this changing stuff and doing stuff. It's it's handing out the right titles to the right people, elevating the right people to the right positions. It's not about radical. It's not about changing stuff. It's about doing all the kind of the social putting putting pieces in the in, in their proper order, which. Um, it turns out is probably the case for at least for this government. This is not a government that is going to, to do anything other than hopefully govern well and kind of maintain the steady course. Um, so yes. Uh, so, and you know, it, 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 other than, you know, Phineas Finn, we also get, we also see a lady Eustace at the disreputable party. It's funny. There's two parties. There's Lady Glencora's party and there's, um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ro Dick Roby's party, which is, it's kind of got all the retro, retro baits in it. And of course, Lady Eustace is there. We get a little pop in, pop in of her. And we still see like there's uh, some other ladies there like, no, I don't want anything to do with her. I know the score on that. She's no, she's no lady really. And, you know, so she's still skiving, she's still skiving around. Oh, and one of the wonderful things, one of the things that kind of clues um Pallister in I love this the one of the things that cues Pallister into the fact that oh god uh this my government is 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 a is 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 a sham it's all about par parties and stuff like that is he, he gets this upstart letter from some journalist who says well you know you're you're conducting all your business in your private home so you should really invite me to your party so I can cover it of course I'll cover it to your best advantage if you invite invite me and of course and as as you're reading this I'm going like yes I know who it is I know who it is and indeed it is Quintus Slide Phineas Finn's uh nemesis uh from the last dark 
couple of novels, uh, Phineas Finn and Phineas Redux. And uh, yes, he's the People's Banner uh, reporter is still there, still hammering things through, still being a, a nuisance, being an upstart, being uh, I, I love him. I love him. He's he is a great he is a great historical uh, representative representative of a reporter. I love him. He is he is a part of this society. He 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 brings he brings uh, such. Uh, loveliness to this because that's the thing I like, like about Trollope. He, he really, he really d- depicts like all, all kind of, fo- all, uh, layers of society. He, he, like, you know, he's interested in how things work. And, and, and Quintus Slide is one of the ways that British democracy, uh, works in all its venal, venal self-serving, um, oiliness and stuff like that. Um, so yes, that, that, Palliser realizes that uh and you know he he uh, of course that means he intrudes on Glencora's business and and shows up to the party early and sees the massive amounts of money that Glencora is spending and the massive amount of display she is doing and it's where he this is where he kind of recalls oh that the old he is now the new Duke of Omnium but the old Duke of Omnium who I always felt like this useless fellow he's just like I, he goes around being the Duke, but that was like very important to the society. And uh, a lot of people, I, um, res- the, a lot of characters I respected were like, wow, this guy is important. This guy is an important part of our society of being, of his Dukeness, of being arist- arist- aristocratic, because a part of the glue of the society. And um, Palliser kind of reflects that, you know, the Duke of Omnium never used his old palace, never did all this kind of garish display. He, but the thing is, uh, he's he's a very different Duke of Omnium. He's a politician. He has to kind of oil the, oil the, the the levers. He has to please people. He's a part of being in this um, in the, in this coalition government is pleasing his coalition members. This is members of his, his own party. And the opposing party, and uh, Glencora is really good at this. But he finds it, as he says to her, and it quickly re- 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 withdraws the word. He finds it rather, um, maybe vulgar. And she's like vulgar, and she's like I withdraw the word. I withdraw the word. And but they have a very frosty night, and Glencora, Glencora considers like, oh, maybe I should stop doing this. You know, maybe I should stop. But then she realizes, a, she does not want to fail. She, she's, she's got that fighting spirit. She does not want to fail, but she also thinks that Pallister makes a good prime minister. And even though he would refuse this help, uh, she's going to give it to him whether he likes it or not so she can help prop up this government. Now, at the same time, we have people like Sir Orla- Orlando Br- Bloom, who, because the Duke of Omnium is in the House of Lords, uh, there has to be has to be someone in the House of Commons as the leader. And that turns out to be they, 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 they give they give it to Orlando Drought, Sir Orlando Drought, who is basically a yes man, a guy who doesn't really have a thought in his own head, but starts getting he starts getting up because like I'm the leader of the house of commons. Maybe I should be the prime minister. And in the day there's people like chattering in his ear behind saying, Oh yes, you should, you should. You think these are people who are manipulating, manipulating him. But uh, he's like, well, you know, so he goes to palace and says, well, we should have a policy. And it, it, you know, he doesn't know what the policy should be. Cause he's a, he's a done, he's a dunderhead. Um, and palace is just like, yeah, look at the tree over there. I don't, don't talk to me about policy. And you can see that these are the these these signs. This uh, stuff like the Irish question. There's this whole thing about uh, about uh, the brewers uh, wanting their licenses. Um, not even have to have to pay for licenses anymore. It's like this is a fragile fragile coalition, and they they can't really do much. And like any little cracks uh, could end up in the whole thing falling to bits. Uh, and it's only because of the actual prime minister, Lady Glencora, that this government is being held together at the moment, uh, much to uh, Palliser's chagrin. But we'll see as the novel goes on, oh, will this government survive? Uh, you know, or will Palliser sabotage it? Will other people in his government, will Lady Glencora's own inexperience, uh, she makes an offhand quip that gets taken the wrong way and it's immediately apparently is going to get get spread spread around uh to to the disadvantage of her and her husband um uh, so we have that in the one side we have this whole thing with lopez like is lopez uh are we like i you know it's like is trollope is like smart enough that like 
is 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 Lopez a villain? Is is Lopez the evil intruder who's manipulating the the angelic uh, um, Wharton family and and edging out Arthur Fletcher, the Fletcher family, who's he's the establishment choice of like oh I love Emily and he seems to really love Emily so though he's so over dramatic it's hard to it's hard to take him it's hard to take him serious sometimes but uh, it's it's like but and Emily says like yeah I don't love you like a man a, a man and a woman love each other I you know she loves she loves Lopez and Lopez loves her and so is this like star crossed lovers but then we've got this whole kind of racial mix in there which I'm not quite sure it'll be interesting to see how it goes whether we're supposed to take uh the racism you know he's he's a foreigner he's he's potentially Jewish oh my god as 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 a bad thing like is is this a racist novel or is this a novel that's depicting uh racist people I mean it does seem to say uh that Abel Wharton is a bigot it does seem to say that um but is it saying like yeah but maybe uh you know that's fine about being progressive but we don't want to be so progressive that we're marrying our daughters off to these foreign people who potentially aren't Protestants as well is 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 that in there? There's this disquiet of like, you know, uh, which one are we supposed to like, you know, it could be Lopez is loves, loves, loves Emily is a foreigner is he could be Jewish. Um, but is also an evil conniving guy who's, who's scheming. Um, there's also a thing of just like Arthur Fletcher and Everett Wharton are both to me are both these really entitled guys who are like, they've been born, they've been born rich. They've been born good looking. They've been born, with all the all the silver spoons in their mouth, and they they haven't had to much do much effort. Whereas uh, Lopez, Ferdinand Lopez, obviously has had to fight every bit of the every bit of the way, and has had to be calculated, and has had to. I think they talk about it, carry his empire in his eyes. Um, and there's a part of me that it seems to be running. I don't know if that's the books. The book is kind of running counter to, to it, or if it's my reading of it is counter to it. Of I, you can almost you can say like Lopez is actually somebody who's working hard for what he wants. That when they talk about him saying like you know having that doubt about like you know I she's revering uh, Emily and he's got his doubts about it. It's like he's working hard to get his to to win to win uh, Emily uh, and to win his position in the society. Uh, away from a lot of people who just expect this to fall into their lap. There's a whole thing with Arthur Fletcher and his brother who are like, well, you know, if she refuses me, well, then I'll just walk off because if it, she doesn't fall right into my lap, then, you know, then it wasn't meant to be. And it, and uh, his um, uh, um, Arthur Fletcher's uh, brother, John, says something to the effect of like, you know, says that to his wife and his wife said, well, gee, I, you know, I guess it's good that I caught you on the first bounce or you just would have walked off from me. And then, uh, and and there there indeed is that 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 you know entitlement thing again. So uh, I have to I have to I kind of like there's a lot of stuff that's like pushing like oh this is an inv Lopez is the invader he's he's like getting he's getting into this family uh, illicitly and he's like oh he's foreign and oh you know but it's like no he's like a hardworking he's a hardworking guy so it'll be interesting to see how the novel plays out that way what what. Um, agenda is this a xenophobic uh um you know um prejudiced uh, th a line or is this a kind of subversively like we're playing with this a little bit uh line so that that'll be interesting to see because uh, I, I you know arthur fletcher seems like a bit of a pill to me that way so as all that is that is where i'm at so far with the first uh, 20 chapters of the prime minister by anthony trollope uh, obviously as usual i'm really enjoying trollope regardless of you know the things that i he's probably especially because of these these little naughty little questions here i think you know i, I trollope I, I i think i'm going to trust trollope as, as 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 that kind of a writer who uh who who doesn't want to make it easy for the reader uh it's not he's, it's not somebody who's going to kind of just like oh I'm going to, he's going to entertain you, but he's going to challenge you. Uh, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. So yes, I'm going to go off and watch Steve's video on the first 20 chapters. Uh, if you haven't done that, I encourage you to do so. And uh, I guess if you've read it, if you've listened to him, uh, hopefully I haven't completely repeated what he said and wasted your time. <laughs> but you would have figured that out by a long time ago and would have turned me off. So uh, more videos later.